Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part two, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I created the sand, the plastic bucket and the figure of Isla. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, these are the pencils initially I'm using for the underdrawing or underpainting of the sand. Decided to just ghost the image of the outline first and then these are the colours I'm going to use for the figure and the sand, so they're all together there. So basically what I'm doing here is just laying some foundation to work on. So trying to get a little bit of form in here, just a light pressure where it's mid-tone and more pressure where it's a highlight. I love this stage, it's really a chance to be quite loose and free flowing. So just take your time and just feel the movement of things and the connection. So there's a connection to everything, it's all oneness. So I'm aware of everything while I'm just drawing just one thing, so it becomes everything. So I'm just laying in the white and then glaze over the top and I'm not worried about the value being right or the chroma, all this is is to get the shapes in the right place and everything in proportion and just correcting the outline um, just if it needs it. Quite a fascinating figure to draw Isla in this scene because there's a reflected light from this red bucket which is creating quite a lot of rich redness across the face and the figure so that would be quite interesting to do. It's the same procedure whatever I'm doing I map it out with the white and then just glaze over. That's why I like to use the grey board because I can use the the board's colour to create different variations of tones and then just glaze over it and then that creates the right sort of tones um, to create some sort of form. And then what I'll do when all I've done all this is just add all that rich colour on top of it. But basically this is just to make sure everything's in the right place. Just slowing it down to real time just to show you what I'm doing here. Just using a 680 pencil from the Carbofella range. And this is 110, like a light grey, grey-white. And just shaping up the area I'm wanting. And then using that brown for the shadows. It's always handy when you've got a colour very similar to what you're looking for. So I just got the texture underneath, we're using that light grey and then just glazed over with this colour, it's 680 from the Carbofella range. And then just continuing really and just really relaxing, enjoying the flow. Just getting the circle right of this bucket here and just taking my time with it uh, and like I say I'm not really interested in getting the value right or the chroma it's just getting the shape and everything in position right just starting to put some rich colours in now so I'm using burnt sienna and black together to create the shadow uh, just playing about just see what happens that's burnt umber there and then using that 680 carbofello and still using the light grey because uh, it desaturates a little bit, so I'm just trying that to start with. But I do substitute that for a richer colour later on in the video. You'll see me um, doing that. Just slowing it down to real time here so you can see what pace I'm at. I'm just sort of feeling my way and just changing up the actual direction and pressure of this pencil as I go along, just to create that feeling of uh, the sand. Uh, the colour's not quite right yet but it's just I'm building it up because there's greys and, and there's all sorts of colours in that sand but it needs to go a lot richer and I'll sort that out later in the video. Now for the vibrant bucket I'm using two reds there, one from Carbothello and one from Karen Dash, both a million. Uh, dark green for the shadows to desaturate the red and lemon yellow just to give it that extra zinginess in places. Now to help to create the chroma I'm really putting a lot of pigment on here um, but I'm putting the white down first then 
glazing over the top, putting plenty down, um, just to create that sort of real vibrancy. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Just slowing it down to real time now so you can see what pace I'm working at. I'm just taking my time really to try and get this shape of the curvature of the bucket correct and then just laying in this dark green with the red which will create a natural sort of shadow. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their wonderful support every month. Can't thank you enough, really appreciate it. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. This portrait of Isla will be on my Patreon at some point, all in real time, in two parts, so be sure to check that out when it comes available. So what I'm doing here is just laying that pigment in and then just varying the pressure to get more pigment down where it's richer using that lemon yellow just to put that little bit more of a zing in this and then just slightly going over with the green to create that sort of subtle desaturation or shadow. So it's basically a combination of that and using the white as well. Now here I'm putting a real highlight in there and even the Faber Castell white is not really vibrant enough to give it that sort of plasticky look and I really want that sort of glint. So I'm using here is a Rembrandt white stick just, just to really put a little bit of a blob of pigment on there and then just move it around then with the Faber Castell. Just using the lemon yellow for the handle of the bucket and then just putting that bit of red in for the reflected light onto it and a bit of brown for the shadow. Here's the colours for the rich colours of the skin tone now. Quite interesting to do because a lot of reflected light now from that red bucket is going onto the skin tone so there's a lot of bright red there. So it's very interesting to sort of create and I'm using the dark green again to create the shadows of that red. In a lot of cases brown and red make really good shadows for skin tone um, so I'm using that as well as well as the dark green. Now you've just got to paint what you see because there's not much detail in this reference image when you look close up. It's quite sort of in shadow and a suggestion here and there so you just have to paint what you see and then the human eye will fill in the gaps. So that's what I'm doing here, is just feeling the energy connecting to the uh, emotion and the feeling of the subject and then just paint that. Just open my heart, let go of the mind and let that reference image come into me rather than me focusing outside and tunnel vision. So the more you can bring it into yourself, as though, as though you're painting the picture inside your heart, the more it'll be more relaxed and it'll be free flowing and it just seems to fall into place then these sort of shadows and everything just seems to happen the more you let go of stopping thinking because if you start try and think about all the detail and trying to get the subtleties it will cause you a lot of tension because there's no detail in there it's just suggestion so you have to learn to be spontaneous and that comes with just letting go of the mind and how it tries to control things and just open up the heart and just go with the flow. All the power you'll ever need is here and now so it's just a matter of being in the moment. Just slowing it down to real time now just showing you I'm using this cotton board just to smooth things over. It's ideal really for the skin tone especially for babies and young children uh, just to sort of soften the grain of the pastel mat. It just takes away that sort of speckled look to it. It smooths it off. Here I'm using the pink white from the Caran Dash. It's really nice and vibrant uh, pencil. And then just glaze over then here and there with the red. I'm using yellow ochre red 
and sometimes lemon yellow and a little bit of blue if it if your skin tone is a little bit purpley just using that red and blue together it creates more of a colder red uh, like a more of the purple so I'm just mixing them together as I go I tend to use the Carbothello white because it's really good for sort of smoothing things off as well because it's quite chalky so if you just smooth the skin just going over the colours and just blends in together you see it just helps as a, like a blending tool in a way when you're creating those tints but for the really sharp highlights I use the Caran d'Ache or the Faber Castell white now just adding more pigment into the hair now um, using brown and then just using the white again for the highlights reshaping it using a little bit of black here and there to give it a little bit more depth before I put the glaze over the hair there what I've just done the preparation I'm just going to do the skin tone here by using the red lemon yellow again and use the dark green the combination of that and a little bit of brown here and there just to create the shadows I'm needing now again you just got to paint what you see because there's not much detail at all so you just have to you know shape it and feel the actual um, how it feels so if it feels wrong it needs attention that's what I go with I don't look at it and think oh there's something wrong with that I need to change it I sense it and if, the, if I feel there's something in the portrait that doesn't feel right it needs attention so that's how I do it is just go by that for the hair I'm glazing over with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue which creates lovely shadows warm shadows and cold shadows and it's the same color as what I'm seeing in the hair so it really lends itself well and then adding that little bit of lemon yellow to the highlights creates that sort of sunlight shine on it that glint if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow now this is a great tool to have in your kit especially when you've got small areas like this and just dab with it it's called a color shaper and it's a silicon tip like brush and you can move pigment around like you would if you were painting so you're just moving it on the tip and just change where the direction is so it's really handy to have especially for these very very small areas if you want to know more about how I do create shadows I have developed a color wheel and it's based on skin tone but it does apply to everything I do even if it's landscapes seascapes whatever I do so it's free for you and there's a link in the description below if you wish to have that so please check that out after the video and that color wheel discusses what I'm doing here actually because I'm using blue orange which is complementary and if it needs to be a little bit dark I'm using the brown what I'm doing now is just going through the portrait and just getting a feel for the balance so here I'm just putting highlights here and there just glazing over with the lemon yellow just to create that sort of vibrancy now I'm putting some more vibrancy into the sand there I'm using a Caran d'Ache and that is actually a flesh tint 5% and 10% I'm just using that and then just glazing over then with the Carbothello pencil that's similar to the sand colour so you've just got to use what's in your kit really I mean if you haven't got all these pencils just use something that is very similar that, but just glaze over with different colours but you need to find a colour that is vibrant enough that it, it sort of almost though it's shining through what you're trying to achieve so it gives it that sort of glow from within if you like so that's what I'm doing here is putting that light colour down and then just glaze over the top but in sand there's all sorts of colours there's greens, there's purples and so yeah, I'm just mixing it up using blues, browns, um, all sorts of things just to create that feeling of the sand. You've just got to go with the instincts really and just feel your way through it. There's no easy way to explain. It's just a matter of just having a go and seeing what works. 
just line it down to real time now just showing you how I'm putting these wisps of hair in I'm just using the side of the pencil I don't sharpen the pencils to a sharp point I use the edge of it so and I just keep turning the pencil to create a new edge and I'm just going with the flow of it just feel the movement and the rhythm of the hair and just flow with it you don't have to be exactly the same as the reference again just looking overall just seeing what needs to be highlighted so I've used the Rembrandt stick just to place little dots of highlight and move it around with the Faber Castell and then glaze over again just to create that sort of vividness and the balance to the overall portrait. So just going around checking everywhere, just make sure everything's shaped rightly. At this point of the portrait I'm looking in the mirror a lot just to make sure that I can see things afresh because when you look at it in the mirror you look at it at a different angle and it brings out imperfections so I tend to do that a lot and then just touching here and there just replacing the color here and there it makes all the difference it's just a case of getting that balance like I say it's just how it feels if it feels wrong there's something that needs to be attended to so I don't overthink it I just go with the feeling of it I notice on this arm it was quite straight on the shadow so it needed to be changed subtly so just those little changes uh, but I saw that by looking in the mirror you see and I'm using that colour shaper again just little sort of dabs I don't, I don't drag it with that colour shaper just dab it and it's an amazing tool and it's a case of putting that white in again glaze over subtle changes here and there is looking at the edges so when you look, final touches is edges chroma and value so you're looking at all those three and comparing one shade against another one chroma against another until you're quite happy with what it looks like another great way as well to make sure everything's okay is to take a photograph with your mobile phone take your picture into another room turn it upside down I've heard of people doing that anything to actually look at it from a different angle even in a different light source can bring out certain things that need changing thank you so much for watching the video right till the end I really appreciate it if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel and if there's any questions please leave a message in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can so in the meantime, if you want to see any more of my work, please check out this video here. Take care.